This guy literally could have died and I can see myself being in the same situation and in some ways I kind of sort of have and maybe I've just got lucky. Um, I don't know, I really don't know what else you can do to prevent this kind of situation from happening. This guy was doing like everything that he could. And I'm gonna tell you, there's something that he did that absolutely I think saved his life because Boy, it's something I, I've been, I, I talk about, but I don't always do myself as well. So um, this guy tipped over his tractor, okay? He lives in Tennessee. That's, that's pretty hilly country, but honestly, the pictures that he sent me, it doesn't, even look, it doesn't even look that hilly. This looks relatively flat. And so hills come into play, um, and I think it did here, but I think more so this, is, this goes to a, a danger that's just working in the woods and in timber, and you should probably take a little bit more seriously because what's up above you could kill you just like what's underneath you. So anyway, let's talk about this. First of all, this guy starts off with his email talking about, he appreciates the videos and everything, that's all good, and then talks about wheel spacers as well. And then he kind of gets into what actually happened. And so he's, uh, he's, he gets in to tell me here, my property in Tennessee has a lot of hills. I need all the stability I can get. That's why he's talking about wanting to add some wheel spacers on there. He said, Please take a look at these attached pictures. This happened to me today. It was absolutely terrifying. My grapple got hung up on a big thick vine that went into the treetops. I was on a slope. The tractor was at a 45 degree angle, kind of the balanced tipping point. And I was praying like crazy. I tried nudging the tractor forward and backward ever so slowly. I tried raising and lowering the bucket, curling it in both directions. Nothing worked. Every move caused me to go past that tipping point. I was leaning to one side, keeping the tractor balanced. I was praying like crazy the entire time, and finally it went over. But God is good, and both me and the tractor are fine. A huge blessing. Anyway, I want to get those spacers on my tractor right away. <laughs> Thanks for, a point, for pointing me in the right direction on the widest spacers I can get on the front and the back wheels. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. So a uh, lot, to, lot to take in here and some more follow-up too. But as far as wheel spacers go, uh, Bora was a sponsor of ours for a long time, and we actually never sold wheel spacers. Still think that they're a great solution for a lot of folks, but go uh, check out Bora. Uh, their, their website is actually motorsport-tech.com. Um, talk to those folks. They will hook you up with the right spacers to fit your machine. Typically one to six inches in width, uh, rear axle, front axle, whatever you need. There's different requirements. If you're running a mower deck, oftentimes you can only go so wide, but even on our 1025 we have over there, we don't have a, I don't run a mower deck on it, but I only have two inch spacers on there and even two inch spacers make a big difference. Okay. So anyway, um, yeah, try to get that set up, you know, wheel spacers, wheel weights, liquid ballast, rim guard is our channel sponsor. Get all that stuff set up ahead of time before you run into situations like this. This is a perfect example, right? It's great that, that he wants to take that corrective action now but a lot of people aren't so lucky, you know? So spend the money before it happens because you can go on the Facebook forums or posts or groups or whatever, the tractor forums and all that kind of stuff. And you'll find this stuff all the time. You see it in news articles. We do all kinds of safety videos, you know, where we're showing articles, headlines of people dying. I mean, that this stuff happens on a regular basis. You just don't think it's going to, but tractors are dangerous. And the number one cause of farm related accidents are tractor rollovers fatalities, farm related fatalities, I think, are tractor rollovers. Okay, tractors are dangerous tools. You might ask how else are you gonna die on a, on a farm? Well, I'm sure there's about 10,000 ways. So anyways, let's see what else he has to say here about his situation. We had some back and forth, really, really nice guy. I think he posted this on uh, a Facebook forum as well. Had some additional feedback on there too. Well, I mentioned that I was gonna probably do a video on this because this is a great example of uh, a, a unique situation that can be applicable to a lot of folks. I have been in the woods. I've had vines that have hit my tractor that I've kind of driven along and something snapped off you, the vine did, or a branch came down. You know, I, don't, I haven't had a whole tree come down, but I haven't also had one that's been so strong where it's held on and then tipped my tractor back either. So uh, maybe it's because I'm using bigger tractors, but that is like a super dangerous situation to be in. So. Lots of hills on his property and slopes. Now he's doing his best to try to drive up and down the slopes and avoid going sideways as much as possible. That's huge, okay? Don't ever side hill on a, on a slope. These tractors are too narrow. That's where the spacers come in. And lowering your center of gravity, okay? 
When I do have to go sideways, if it's inevitable, he's got a backhoe on there. He swings the backhoe to the uphill side to get as much counterbalance up that way. Also now very careful not to take too big of a risk on steeper slopes. If it feels questionable, I now avoid driving sideways on those slopes. Good call. I have a much bigger respect for large tree vines. I've since learned how strong they can be, strong as a cable. The vine caught my grapple while I was on the slope and contributed to the tractor toppling over. Helping teach a fitness class for years in the evening and working out regularly my entire life, I'm extremely fit and I'm convinced that if I wasn't as and strong and fit and in good shape that the impact velocity when he hit the ground would have seriously injured him, broken bones, whiplash, concussion, etc. there. So that's probably a good point too. I mean, your physical health is gonna certainly determine, uh, partially determine that outcome too. So, you know, but I, I had said that he had, you know, kudos to him on a couple of decisions. Number one, he had his roll bar up, okay? So many of us put our roll bars down when we're going in and out of a garage or a storage building or navigating in the woods because it's in the way and gonna hit things, right? This is a huge reason why, because you never know when you're gonna need it. It's there for a reason to protect your life. But if you have your roll bar up, you need to have your seatbelt on. Those two go together. Read your manual, okay? Always reference your manual. Maybe your manual, for whatever reason, tells you something different. But that's a pretty common theme, is that if your roll bar is up, you put your seatbelt on. And the reason for that is so that if you roll over, you stay in that confined area. You can't go flopping out and have the, the tractor come crashing down on you. Okay, if you don't have your seatbelt on, you go flopping out, then the tractor rolls over on you and crushes you. But if you're strapped in that operator station, you may still get hurt in some regards, but it's going to really minimize the, the chance of the tractor crushing you. So a couple of big things I gave him uh, kudos on there. He did, he did a good job as far as that goes. And very graceful guy. You know, I mean, it's, it takes a good human being to be able to have a complete accident like this happen. You know, I mean, where you can post the stuff all online and just get trashed by all the people that think they know everything that's going on in the world. And then you still come out of it, you know, with a positive attitude, really, really just a really good guy there. Now, last thing he mentioned, uh, a few interesting comments from his Facebook post, uh, things that maybe do or don't make sense. But uh, one gentleman commented and said that the tractor is too small for a grapple, which it's a 1025R. I mean, there's grapples on there all the time. I don't know what that even has to do with anything. You just size the tool to work with the tractor. So they make grapples for all sizes of machines. I don't, I don't tend to agree with that one. Backhoes cause unwanted lean. Uh, yes, I mean, so generally speaking, if you think of a backhoe, it's kind of starting just underneath the level of the three-point hitch, and then a lot of that weight is up higher, you know, with the, with the arm and everything else bent up this way and, and all that. So a lot of your, it's just raising your center of gravity. And so that's working against you. Um, that's where it makes it even more important to have those wheel spacers to widen that width, you know, and to get more weight down low with wheel weights, with liquid ballast as well. So to kind of counteract that, and, and you need to be even more aware as an operator. Okay, it's the same thing if you're carrying your, your loader bucket way up in the air or a grapple with a load way up in the air, it's super wobbly, right? Carry that load as low as you possibly can all the time. There's no reason to move around here unless you're just looking for an accident, okay? I mean, I'm hoping that that Chris is uh, B-rolling those couple of Kubota fellas that are, <laughs> they're just flipping tractors over constantly. I mean, it's just, there's a bunch of knuckleheads. It's a great example. I love to reshow that video. I, I, I have to, I have to hope that that was a fake video too, but um, I should have rotated the backhoe around to the counter to counter the weight. Yep. Great idea in theory, but again, you're strapped into the seat uh, already in some very precarious situation and then to try to twist your body around. Yeah, he's in shape and, and everything, but to try to twist your body around and somehow magically reach the back of levers. I mean, I get it in theory, but it doesn't seem that practical. Someone said the same thing happened to him with a larger tractor. A grapple also got hung up on a tree vine and pulled him over as well. Okay, there you go. It can happen on the bigger, bigger tractors too. Tree vines here can be over three inches in diameter. The vine that got him was about two inches. So, you know, a lot to take away from that. And I think more than anything else, it's just, a, there, I, I can't make too many videos like this, okay? And again, I'm gonna keep talking about it too. We have a lot of new viewers all the time on the channel. And so a lot of you guys are new tractor owners. 
you're figuring this stuff out and tractors are dangerous tools. So use them with an abundance of caution, you know, and um, I don't know how many other channels make safety videos, but watch all the safety videos you can out there. All right. I, there is a, it's good to have a healthy fear of your tractor. Okay. They're a very amazing tool and most of us don't have any issues with them day in and day out. But I will also tell you that most of us can probably tell you a story or two about a dangerous situation that we got lucky and learned from. Okay. And so you, you get that rear tire or that rear axle off the ground. That's something you never want to feel again, right? You start to tip over to a side. That's not a comfortable feeling. Okay. So there's a lot of things that if you never have a story to share, well, you're smarter than the rest of us. So on that note, if you need some ballast weight or you need a plan for your tractor, send us an email. Okay. If you're not going to buy it from us. That's, that's fine. I still want to make sure you're set up properly. I would prefer you ask the question and get set up somehow versus not asking the question, waiting until after it happens, and hopefully you're not the headline for one of our future videos. If we can help you out, well, we'd love to earn your business. So check out what we have for sale at goodworkstractors.com. Tractor attachments, ballast weight packages, grapples, snow pushers, pallet forks, tillers, box blades, you name it. We sell tractors as well. We ship all over the country every day of the week. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.